Deep in the American Southwest, there is one venomous snake that reigns supreme. Reaching impressive lengths of six or more feet and equipped with a powerfully potent hemotoxic venom, the western diamondback rattlesnake is among the most successful reptile lineages in our country. Spanning an impressive range from Arkansas to California, these venomous snakes are among some of the most commonly encountered vipers in the U.S. And where there are encounters, bites occasionally follow. Their hemotoxic venom works to destroy the tissue and blood of their victims, rotting away the flesh and shredding the blood cells. Without treatment, bites can easily escalate to the point of being lethal. But just how deadly is the Western Diamondback really? Now, there are some who claim this snake to be the deadliest in all of the U.S. But just how valid is this claim? I'll have to venture out to find one of these animals to find out just how deadly they truly are. Why? Because that's what I'm all about. My name is Jack, and I've dedicated my entire life to traveling all over the globe to find the strangest and deadliest animals alive. I'm willing to get in close where others wouldn't dare in order to uncover and share the truth about even our most dangerous and misunderstood species. Now this mission once again is bringing me face to face with one of the United States deadliest species as I search for the truth about them and their bites. Are these truly as deadly as they seem? Or have they been greatly exaggerated? Let's find out. Now, basically, folks, we're in one of the best places in the world to look for one of the most iconic snakes in the United States. We're here in the lovely Sonoran Desert. As you can see behind me, the sun really hasn't hit most of this tiny little area. This is the perfect time to catch our lovely venomous reptile friends. I'm hoping to spot one as it's maybe waiting, maybe getting ready, getting warmed up for the day. Because let me tell you folks, during the day, this time of year in Arizona, it's getting over 115 degrees Fahrenheit. It is hot. So these early morning times are a sanctuary for these venomous snakes. And if we're gonna find one and figure out just how dangerous they can be, just how aggressive or defensive they might be, and just how likely you are to maybe even be bit by one, we're gonna have to utilize the cooler times of the day. So we're gonna get searching, we're gonna get looking. Hopefully, luck and mother nature is on our side today. Western diamondback rattlesnakes get big. They are one of the largest species of rattlesnakes on earth. And that means they can store a lot of venom. Take note of their exaggerated triangular head. Right at the back of their mouth, lies the venom glands. These are proportionally quite large and in larger snakes can hold a wicked amount of syrupy yellow venom. Their venom evolved as a means of procuring and digesting food and it's designed to destroy tissue and blood upon injection. This hemotoxin makes these snakes incredibly dangerous. Although it does not work to kill larger animals as fast as a neurotoxic bite, the gangrenous rot and flesh damage that can set in after a bite can cause a slow, painful, infection-riddled death over days or even weeks. Their large size accompanied with a powerful venom means these snakes can easily inject a lethal dosage of venom as adults, and without medical intervention, upwards of 20% of all bites can be guaranteed death. Now, Western diamondback rattlesnakes are among some of the more widespread of the rattlesnakes in the genus Crotalus. Now, these animals are gonna be tucked up under rocks, under logs. They might even start moving at this time of day. So I gotta keep my eyes peeled. Out here in the Sonoran deserts, they're generally more of a gray, sometimes pinkish color. So I'm not looking for quite the dark, rich browns that I would be looking in my own home state of Texas, as they are also native there. So it's just gonna be kind of a matter of hoping I can pick out that faint diamond-shaped pattern. And hopefully, it's when I've got plenty of distance. Although these animals are great at warning you if you get too close, they of course can strike. And a rattlesnake bite here in the States can cost upwards and over 100, 150,000, 200,000 dollars to treat. 
So I definitely don't want to do that. And I don't want to be bitten by such a venomous snake either. So I'm going to keep looking. And I feel like whew, we got to be close on the trail. Known for its iconic defensive behavior, Western Diamondback rattlesnakes are often depicted as aggressive, rearing up in an intimidating S shape, as if inviting threats to come in close enough to be bitten. Is this the right idea though? Rattlesnakes are actually one of the few venomous snakes to employ an actual warning system, letting larger animals and threats know not to get too close. If an animal was aggressive, you'd think they'd slink up silently to attack whatever other creature they felt threatened by. Why do these rattlesnakes give us the option of retreating to safety? Rattlesnakes, like all venomous snakes, rely on their venom first and foremost to procure food. In the oftentimes arid habitats they inhabit, energy and venom can be in short supply in times where food is scarce or water is unavailable. You may not realize it, but a snake's first priority is to ensure its own survival, not kill a predator or threat. Does this mean rattlesnakes let us off the hook, so to speak? And if we hear a rattle and walk the other way, we're in no danger at all? Let's see. After hours and hours of walking up this trail, we began to wonder if we'd encounter a rattlesnake after all. But just as I turned a bend in the path, I spotted the very thing. I was hoping for. Oh, no way. Folks, take a look right here. This is what we were after. This is a beautiful, as you can hear, rattlesnake. This is a Western diamondback rattlesnake, the species we were searching for today. But this guy right here is a nice sized adult for this part of Arizona. These guys don't get too terribly big, not like the crazy monster sized ones that sometimes we get back, in, back home in Texas but this is a lovely little adult. I can see already that this rattle is huge, which means this is a very healthy and quite old individual um, because each of those little extra segments of the rattle indicates times when this snake has grown. And you're not able to tell the age because sometimes those rattles can break off, but it's a great way of being able to tell just how well a rattlesnake is doing generally out here. But these guys are powerful, impressive snakes easily one of the most iconic snakes here in the United States, and perhaps, maybe, even one of the deadliest. But don't just take my word for it, take future me's word for it in this next little segment here. Let's deep dive and take a close look at the venom of these snakes and just how dangerous it could be to you lovely folks at home. Now you may be thinking, hang on Jack, a 10 to 20% fatality rate isn't very high. I would have thought it would be much higher for a large venomous snake such as a western diamondback. Well my friends, while you may not die from the average bite, the venom of this animal if left untreated can permanently scar and maim the human body. Severe pain, muscle damage, internal bleeding, vomiting, heavy necrosis, convulsions and more can set in even with mild envenomations. In many cases, untreated bites can rot fingers, toes, and even full limbs in mere days or weeks, necessitating amputation in many cases. Although not always able to kill the average human, these bites are far from inconsequential. In their range, this species is likely the deadliest snake to encounter. Not just because of its venom, but because of its proximity to humans. Some of the most venomous snakes on Earth are far from being the deadliest. And I'll explain what I mean. Take the inland taipan, for example. It is likely the most venomous snake species on land. And yet, it has never been documented to inflict a fatal bite on anyone. Does this mean that we're wrong about their venom? Of course not. It's quite easy to explain. Most venomous does not mean most dangerous or deadly. You see, the inland Taipan lives in a desolate, remote region where humans very rarely find themselves in, and so their paths never cross. Inversely, although not nearly as toxic, the western diamondback has both a moderately lethal venom and a range that overlaps with huge populations of people. 
This means they can show up in backyards, garages, and yes, even homes on occasion. This means, although far less venomous, the western diamondback is actually more deadly than the far more toxic inland taipan. Not due to toxicity, but due to proximity. Now, as you can see, this animal's rattling. He's kind of reared up. Now, while this might look like a strike position, and they can most definitely strike from this position, this animal is showcasing its defensive behavior. Now, a lot of people think that just because an animal is venomous, it means that it's aggressive or that it's out to harm us or get us. In reality, this is not the truth. This animal here was likely just coiled up sleeping. It's still a little cool in the morning. Probably still a little too cool for this guy to quite be up and about. So he was just relaxing here, hidden underneath this rock. Now, while this might look like aggressive behavior to you, I can see that this animal is kind of scared. He's kind of backed himself up against this rock. He knows he's protected back there, but also he's rattling, letting me know, back off, buddy, I am not interested. And that's an incredible adaptation that these animals have, not only to be in more of a defensive mode rather than aggressive, but to let predators know to back off. They don't want to bite us. They don't want to defend themselves, but they will if they have to. And they're going to be nice enough to give us a warning first. And that's one of the main reasons why these snakes are so important to have around. They do a great job at helping maintain the balance of their ecosystems, but they're one of the few snakes that can really actually let you know if you're getting too close before you step on one accidentally. So these are just such cool animals. Again, not the aggressive monsters a lot of people think they would be, but these are defensive animals just trying to survive. While it's debatable which species is really the deadliest snake in the US, it boils down to just two species. The craziest part is, they're very, very close cousins. The Eastern Diamondback and Western Diamondback are in constant struggle for the title of deadliest snake in the US. Their large size and potent venom makes each species a true force to be reckoned with. On one hand, the Eastern Diamondback's larger size and more potent venom makes each bite that much more deadly. But the Western Diamondback's larger range and more frequent human contact means they likely bite more people per year. It's estimated around seven to 8,000 people per year are bitten by venomous snakes in the US. And of that number, generally only around three to five people actually die. While this large number estimate includes all venomous snakes in the US, almost all lethal bites come from rattlesnakes. While it's unclear which species is truly the deadliest, the fact that it's between the two diamondbacks should come as no surprise. Now, these snakes are some of my absolute favorites. They are just icons of these desert habitats, and I never will get tired of running across one. Now, even though these animals, yes, have a potentially dangerous, maybe even lethal bite, of course, you can see here, they are not generally quick to use that. And that's why these animals are so important to respect and to give space to. You don't want to get too close. Just messing around with an animal, even an animal that doesn't want to bite, could easily result in a nasty, nasty chomp. And this venom is not something you want to play around with. It is incredibly potent, powerfully hemotoxic. And what that does is it starts to break down your tissues, starts to clot your blood. And even though it might not kill you every time, you could very easily lose fingers or even limbs should you be bitten by this snake. So it's incredibly important to seek medical attention first. But yes, this is truly a nasty, nasty venom. While it can be scary to know we share our country and yards with such dangerous reptiles, remember this key fact. Rattlesnakes, and all venomous snakes for that matter, need their venom to survive. To waste their venom on a bite could spell disaster for these animals. Should you encounter a rattlesnake and can see where it is, simply stop and move in the opposite direction. It's easy to inflate these animals into monsters out for blood, but the reality is these animals are simply trying their best to survive in a harsh and unforgiving world. The best way to keep yourself safe around snakes is to give them a healthy distance and respect and let them move along their way. Well, my friends, we've had a great time learning about the fantastic bite 
and venom of this lovely little rattlesnake. So I'm gonna let him get back to his lovely nap, but I appreciate you folks joining with me on this adventure. This has been really, really cool getting up close and personal with a beautiful Western Diamondback here in one of the more iconic places to see them, the Arizona Sonoran Desert. So we're gonna let this guy get back to it. He's doing a great job at warning predators, doing a great job at surviving out here. So we're gonna let him get well on his way, but how fantastic of a beautiful snake is that? <laughs> Too cool.